So let's start with the word analysis file. Um, let me explain what it is we're going to do. We are going to um, read a, a long book. We're going to read, we're going to like basically scan through Through the Looking Glass um, by Lewis Carroll. And we're going to analyze every word in that novel. Um, and we're just going to do some statistics on that novel. Um, and we're going to do some comparisons between the words um, in Through the Looking Glass and the words in our dictionary. Um, because if you're familiar with Lewis Carroll, Lewis Car Carroll has a tendency to like make up words, um, some really cool words. But we're going to see like what words um, are made up and what words are actually in our dictionary. Um, and then we can look at some other analysis aspects as well. So we're going to write all of this you know, analysis code within this class word analysis. And it's got a main method here at the top that we're going to come to in a moment. But we're going to write this other like helper method first. Uh, this is where we're going to focus our efforts and first apply some of these newfound set methods. Um, if we look at the Java doc here, we can say the read words method is going to read all of the words from a file. And so it has one parameter, which is the name of the file. Um, and it returns a reference to a set with all lowercase words in the file, um, where a word is defined as a sequence of upper and lowercase letters. Um, we don't want to get tripped up by like capitalization. So even if the word is capitalized, maybe it's at the beginning of a sentence, we'll make it lowercase before we add it to the set. So let's work on writing this together. First, um, in this case, we don't care about the order we iterate through items in a set with. So we're going to use the faster implementation. We're going to make a new hash set. However, we are going to assign it to a variable of type set. And I'll explain why in a moment. But this is best practice. This is something we didn't ever really have to worry about in AP CSA. So we're going to make a new hash set object, but we're going to assign it to a variable of type set. And the reason why we do this is because the implementation of the set doesn't matter. So we're going to store the reference in a variable of type set. Best practice says if the, if the specific implementation doesn't matter in our application, um, our variables that we store things in should be of the more generic type. Uh, so therefore, our variables should be of type set, the interface, um, even though the actual object we're creating is a hash set. This is something we'll focus on in software engineering. Like I said, it's not something we focused on in AP Computer Science A. Um, but if we were to, whenever we had created a new array list, we would not have signed it to a variable of type array list. We would have assigned it to a variable of type list. That would be better practice. It was just beyond the scope of the course in the past. But we'll try to follow this, this better practice this year. All right, so we made a new hash set. We have our bag. We have our bucket. It's empty. There's nothing in it. Okay. So we're going to read all the words out of the file. So that means we need a new scanner object. Um, so we'll create a new scanner. You may remember that the scanner class, uh, we can initialize it with like system.in to read from the keyboard. We do not want to type in war and peace through the keyboard. Um, but we could also specify another string, which isn't applicable here. But you may remember we did an activity in a lab where we specified a file. So we're going to create a new file object. And this is where we'll pass the file name in as a parameter for the new file object. And then sometimes scanner gets confused about how the text file is encoded. So we're going to add a second parameter to the scanner constructor where we explicitly state, hey, this file is encoded as UTF-8. Not to go down too far down like a rabbit hole. That's a Lewis Carroll reference. But um, UTF-8 is, is a way of encoding a text file, which basically says each character is stored in 8 bits, and it's this universal text format. I think that's what UTF stands for. Um, but there's UTF-8, there's UTF-16. 
There's different versions. Scanner usually figures it out. For some reason, um, the Java SDK on Windows improperly identifies this through the looking glass file. I don't know why. So we have to be explicit. Yeah. Are you supposed to have this here? Are you talking about the throws file not found exception part? Ah. So to clarify here, I probably should have done this from the start. This is like looks like a normal method header, right? Public, static, here's the return type, here's the method name, here are the parameters. There is this extra thing after it that says throws file not found exception. Um, we'll, we'll do a little bit with exceptions um, throughout the course. Um, what this is saying is that this method, inside this method, it might directly or indirectly throw a file not found exception. We are not catching it, meaning handling that exception. This is just to let the Java compiler know, hey, this method might throw an exception, so you need to compile it a little bit differently. Um, that's why it says throws file not found exception here, um, and that's why it also says throws file not found exception up here. Otherwise, it just won't compile. We're not going to throw that exception, but um, creating this file object um, and using the scanner could. So, All right. Um, again, we, we did this in APCSA, but that was some time ago. We need to specify how we want to parse the text file. Um, we're interested in reading words, and we defined words as a sequence of upper and lowercase letters. So we're going to use any character other, other than A through Z or capital A through Z as delimiters. You, know, you may remember when we talk about um, scanning and parsing, um, scanner will, will look at it character by character. It will group sequence of the characters into tokens, which in our case are words, and those tokens are separated by delimiters. By default, delimiters are just white space, but we want to include more stuff as delimiters, right? We want all the punctuation to be delimiters. We want anything that's not a letter to be a delimiter. I didn't spell that right. Delimiters. There we go. All right, and the way we do that is we call on our scanner, we call the use delimiter method, and we specify what's called a regular expression. Um, I think regular expressions are fantastic things for you all to learn. I will explain what this one is in just a second. Every character here is like super important. So we're gonna look at those closely. This regular expression, square brackets, says here's a set of characters that make up a pattern. That's what square brackets said. The plus, we're gonna kind of take this outside in. The plus means match the thing to the left one or more times. So this pattern is a set of characters matched one or more times becomes the delimiter, becomes the things that separate our tokens, that separate our words. Often in the square brackets, we put the specific things we want to be part of that set. We can list them out. But in this case, it's easier to define what's not in the pattern. And that's what the caret means. The caret symbol in different contexts usually means not of some sort. So this caret symbol says it's the set of characters that are not A to Z lowercase and A to Z uppercase. So anything that's not A to Z upper or lowercase will be in this set. And our delimiters will be one or more of them in a sequence. And that's what will divide up our words. All right, and now we need to read the file. So we'll say while in dot has next, just like we're accustomed to doing with the scanner. We now have more appreciation for this has next method because, hey, it's the same method that's on the iterators we learned about last week. Here's the cool thing about the set. Adding duplicates to a set is ignored. 
And by the way, just as a reminder, so is removing elements that don't exist. So this means like, we're not gonna even bother checking if a word is already in our set. We're just gonna call the add method on the words variable and put whatever that next token is in there one, after we convert it to lowercase. So next iterates over the next token in the stream from using the scanner. We then convert it to lowercase and the resulting string we're adding to our set. And if that word is already in the set, who cares? Like, we don't. We're not even looking at the value returned from add. So this is what makes sets so nice. We just keep throwing stuff in there. And then we simply need to say return words. There we go. That's all the code it takes to read every word in a text file and put it in a set, which I think is pretty cool. All right, now we get to do the analysis. Now we get to leverage this method. Um, and we'll just do a few pieces of analysis, but you could certainly do more if you want. So first things first, you'll notice over here in our, uh, what is this thing called, File Explorer? Explorer, um, there's words. And if I open this up, this is just a dictionary of words. There's a lot. Um, so that's our dictionary. There's also through the looking glass dot text. I just took um, the text from Project Gutenberg. Project Gutenberg has free and open source um, eBooks of all sorts of books that have gone out of copyright. Um, and so I just downloaded it from there. So here's the whole book. Um, and then if you want to play around with this later, I did the same thing for War and Peace too, um, just because it's really long. So, um, so back to word analysis here. We need to read in um, the dictionary and the novel we want to analyze. So read the dictionary and the novel. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to create a variable of type set again, because that's the more generic type. And we'll say dictionary words, our set of all the words in our dictionary. And we'll call that read words method. And the file path needs to start with SRC, because all of this stuff is inside of the SRC folder inside of our Java project. So we'll say SRC slash words. And then we're going to create another set object called novel words, and we'll call the read words method. And we'll pass src slash through the looking glass dot text. So we're going to do two different analysis tasks here. First one, let's print all the words that are in the novel, but not the dictionary. This is really pretty easy, which is cool. Here we go. Good news. The enhanced for loop works with sets. The enhanced for loop works for every collection that supports the iterator, which is like all of them, okay? So we can keep using our enhanced for loop. For string, so for each word and all the words in the novel, novel words, if the dictionary word set does not contain it, I put a not here. So if not, dictionary words contains the word, let's print it out.
that's pretty easy. Cool. We just figured out in a few lines of code all the words in the novel that aren't in our dictionary. All right, second analysis task. We're going to actually do three. Let's um, print the number of unique words in the novel. I didn't count this one at first because it's so simple. System.out.println, unique words, concatenated with novel words dot size because duplicates are ignored the number of elements in our set that is the number of unique words in the novel like we don't have to do any analysis we just have to call the size method super cool and finally task number three let's print the number of unique words oops unique words with greater than three letters. I just made that up, but maybe we could use this for some sort of lexical analysis, like lexile reading difficulty or um, whatever we want. We're gonna create an iterator to help us with this. Um, and we're not gonna create a list iterator because that only works with lists. We're gonna create a more generic iterator. We still, it's still a generic, we still have to specify we're going to iterate the items we're iterating over our strings. I'm just going to call my iterator I, and I'm going to say novel words dot iterator. That makes a new iterator to iterate over all the elements in the set. To be clear, I could have just written another enhanced for loop. I just want this example to show you both the enhanced for loop and the use of the iterator. That's why I'm doing it two different ways. Either way is totally fine. I just want you to see both. So while I dot has next, this code is almost identical to the code we wrote with the linked list last week. If I dot next, that will iterate over the next element in the set. It returns a reference to that string. If the length of that is less than or equal to three, We're going to remove it from the set. So we're going to actually change our set so that when all is said and done, the only thing left in our set will be those words that are greater than three letters. So I guess I, hold on, I misspoke. Um, we have to use an iterator here because I'm removing elements from a set. We could not use the enhanced for loop because there's no way here to change the set. Okay, so I was, I was incorrect. You, we do have to use the iterator here. Still good for you to see both. After this while loop finishes, after we've removed all the words less than or equal to three letters, then we can just print out what's left. Oops. Unique words greater than three letters. Novel words dot size. Cool. There's much more analysis we could do. I just wanted to, this to be an example because in this example, you get to see how to make a new hash set, how to add elements to the set, how to use an enhanced for loop to easily iterate through every element in the set, how to use the size method, and how to use an iterator and remove elements from that set. Lots of good stuff here. So go ahead and click run up here. And you'll see all the words, gibble, galumping, beamish, these are all from the Jabberwocky poem. There's Jabberwocky itself. Um, Vorpal, that's from the poem. All sorts of good Lewis Carroll words. Some of these just might be like limitations of our dictionary. I think that's a real word. Non-proprietary, sounds good to me. Boro groves. 
anyway. Some of this is like Roman numeral stuff. You know, www, there must be a link in there somewhere. I don't know. Some of it is also different spellings, right? Like British spelling versus American spelling. So, anyway, there are 3,260 unique words in Through the Looking Glass. 2,999 of them are greater than three letters. That's kind of cool. 